everyone, this is Kelly Mara here, and today we are talking about the Miraculous Ladybug movie. Hi, editing Kelly here. Because I forgot to mention it in the video, welcome back to the channel, or if you're new to the pond, go ahead and take a dive. You might like it here. A lot of people have been asking me to, you know, do more videos about Miraculous Ladybug. And to be honest, I just really didn't want to, purely because I've just given up on it. I did not see the show going in any way that I would enjoy. And I had very little faith in the team that was working on it, which is a harsh truth, but you know, that's just how it is. I was supposed to do an epilogue, but I've just been really busy with Wild Word Chapter 2, which is my own personal magical girl story. But then I got an email one day from Alvel, who invited me to review the Miraculous Ladybug movie together. And I had no intention of watching that movie at all because I just don't care about the franchise. I don't care about the characters. Therefore, I do not care about the movie. But I figured it might help to have someone review it with me, you know, to sit down with me and watch the whole thing. And so I decided, okay, I'll do it. It sounds fun. So yeah, if you guys are coming into this video and you're wondering why is there, why is this video part two? I haven't seen the part one. The part one will be on Alubel's channel. So please go ahead and check that out. We go into more in depth about the story and the plot holes in that movie on her video simply because okay so i'll admit it the movie is really fun and good and i really liked it but it is by no means a perfect movie obviously and if you're wondering why i have these cartoonishly large spots stuck on my body it's because these are secret tools that will help us along the way just like the lucky charm so yeah to get into the spirit of the movie, I decided to do a bit of casual cosplay as Ladybug. Which I don't know if it was a good idea or not, but I've already done it, so <laughs> here we are. I went into this movie basically with a clean slate. I pretended, or at least I convinced myself that I had never seen the series, I have no idea who any of these characters are, and I was ready to give the movie a fair shot. And all things considered, I really enjoyed myself, so... Yeah, let's talk about it. Now I'll be honest, going into the movie, I had very mixed feelings because I, I really don't like cringing and I was just terrified the movie would be cringe because it's a kids movie and most kids movies are pretty cringe and that's not like anything to do with Miraculous Ladybug in general, although it can't, it does have its moments, especially in the series. But I did have some hope for this movie, especially finding out later that the movie was completely produced, written by Jeremy Zag, and Thomas Astruck had literally no credits in the movie aside from creator credits because he's the one that came up with the Miraculous Ladybug concept. But from what I've seen in the end credits, he had absolutely nothing to do with the movie itself, which might be why I liked it much better. So what we're going to do is I am going to be deconstructing the remainder of the movie that has not been covered in part one in Alubel's channel. So, and I'll also be kind of going over the story a little bit just for context, but we'll be doing this in a randomized order because I have forgotten which spots have which notes. So we're just going to pull each of them off and see what happens kind of as a symbolic symbolic way of deconstructing the ladybug herself so let's start with i don't know let's do this one story <laughs> wow okay cool so i'm gonna go over this one briefly because i talked about this a lot more in depth in part one with alubel so just some cursory thoughts i guess what i think of the story 
there are two different perspectives that we can tackle this from. The first angle is obviously as a Miraculous fan who has watched the series and has been following the series for a little while. And the other perspective is someone who has never seen the series and has no idea what's going on. So first perspective, we're gonna go through this as someone who has never seen the series before because that was the mindset I came into for the movie. So if I were someone who has never seen Miraculous Ladybug before, I would think, wow, this is so fun. This is so unique. I have never seen anything like it. And yeah, it's nothing special story-wise. It's, you know, nothing revolutionary, but it is fun. It harkens back a lot to like classic magical girl stuff, which I'm sure a lot of people enjoy, and that's a good thing. Obviously, there's no real twists here because everything is revealed kind of early on, and there's nothing really to surprise you, but it's an easy watch, right? You don't need to think that hard. You just sit back, relax, enjoy yourself, and you know, <laughs> cringe sometimes. But as someone who has actually watched the series, this story is so much better than the entirety of Miraculous Ladybug from season 1 and I would dare say up to season 5 because it addressed in 1 hour and 40 minutes everything the series refused to in 5 seasons which is so nice because obviously we have the whole like if you know miraculous ladybug you would be familiar with the whole love square between marinette adrian ladybug cat noir and this resolves that and gabriel and adrian's story which like is crazy i did not expect them to resolve everything in one movie a spoiler alert obviously but they actually <laughs> end up revealing everyone's identities at the end and they had a pretty nice resolution between Adrian and Gabriel. It was really simplified, uh, but you know, it's something and it's actually addressed a lot of the issues I had with the show in general. It, <laughs> it almost felt like they were reading my mind when I was making my rewrite series because a lot of the ideas they implemented in the movie were things that I mentioned I would have liked to see in the series in my rewrite. Basically, my suggestions. I'm not saying that they watched my videos and took my feedback personally, but I am saying that as someone who has put videos out saying, hey, I would have liked to see this, I'm very happy that I did get to see that in the movie. It was awesome. I love that Adrian got to find resolution with his dad. And well, I'll get to that in another segment, but basically, I like that the resolution between Gabriel and Adrian was very satisfying and I'm glad that Adrian was the one who got to like talk his dad out of his lunacy. So that happens in the movie. And also Marinette finds out that Cat Noir is Adrian and in the end she also reveals her identity to Adrian because that's the big thing about the movie that really like was the main difference between it and the series is that there was never an emphasis in the actual movie itself aside from the Netflix summary for some reason that they needed to keep their identity secret that they could never tell anyone who their identities are that they couldn't trust each other there was none of that and I think that's actually for the better I think it's better like this so yeah that is for the story the next one is Let's do this one because it's literally falling off my arm. Ugh, the romance. Relevant to the story, but also my least favorite part just because... Sorry, kid. I love stories. Give me a tummy. Oh, same! Oh, he's just like me for real! I'm at an age where I, I feel creepy <laughs> watching a love story unfold between two kids. Oh, oh my really? god! Ah. Why are you singing this song for 14 year olds? Oh no. So, um, my note for this was it's not that deep, you guys. You're 14. <laughs> Still, it is 
it is still an improvement from the series though. They completely erased all of Marinette's weird spastic stalkerish tendencies towards Adrian. And but Cat Noir is still so annoying. I just I just dislike the way he interacts with Ladybug, even in the original series. So in that regard, it is true to form, but also did it have to be? I just didn't enjoy Cat Noir pining over Ladybug that much. And Adrian really needs to calm down. Although I will say it is nice that in this series, it's the guys who are mostly like lovesick and love crazy. It's a nice kind of subversion of the genre where usually it's the girls that are kind of like, oh, cr boy crazy, romance crazy. It's nice to see that change, personally. What did you think of the romance? Hello? <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, it was cute overall, I guess. Still, the love square was there, but it's less frustrating because it was all dealt with in one movie. So, I can see where both characters are coming from with their affection towards each other. And again, I'm I'm glad it was dealt with in one movie. We have to dance around it for, <laughs> for so long. So, I appreciated that. But, I, I like you, I kind of got a little uncomfortable at some parts. <laughs> My shirt is blue. I hope it's not that noticeable, but I tried to spray my hair blue and the flakes are just coming off. So, sorries. Sorries? So, uh, apologies in advance if you notice my shirt progressively becoming more blue. Anyway, next one. Let's do this one. It's falling off my arm as well. Art! Okay, so this is one of the only things about the movie that you literally cannot fault. It, the art and animation were both top notch. You can tell they invested a lot of time and effort into how the movie looked and how the characters moved. And it was just such an improvement to a lot of the design issues that I had with the characters in the series where most of it usually falls to the, the clothes just being <laughs> just skin tight to their bodies even if it's not supposed to be and the hair lacking volume most of the time. It's all completely addressed in the movie. And let me tell you, the, the animation was so smooth and the actions were really dynamic and engaging. It never felt like you were getting overwhelmed or that it was too fast or too slow. I thought it was just right and the characters moved so well. And here's the thing, right? One thing the animation really helped is Marinette and her characterization. A lot of my complaints with Marinette in the original series is that she is so spastic. She's very hyper and her gestures are so big and eye-catching, which makes sense because it's a show for kids. But the thing is, is that it doesn't fit her personality that is supposed to be this shy, withdrawn, kind of uncertain, unsure of herself kind of person. Uh, it just felt like um, a bit dissonant. However, in the movie, they actually animated Marinette with some restraint. Her gestures aren't so big, they aren't so like quick coming here and there, and they included a lot more subtlety in her movement, which I think really, really hammered home her characterization and thus made her characterization in the movie far superior than that in the show. Another thing is that the lighting in this movie is, like the rendering and the lighting in general, is mind-blowing. There are legitimately scenes in the movie where I just had to stop and be like, whoa, this is absolutely gorgeous. Like several times in the movie even, I was thinking, this is like, Disney level like this could rival Disney Pixar it was that good and it's just okay the eyes are so glassy and vivid like they did the Disney thing where you can literally see reflections of characters and light in the characters eyes and it it was just gorgeous there were some scenes especially with the lighting that just made it look so beautiful you could easily mistake this movie as something Disney put out, legitimately. I guess one thing though, going back to animating Marinette with restraint, 
sometimes they take it a bit too far where she doesn't emote as much as she could have. And part of it feels a little bit like they're trying too hard to make her look pretty versus making her um, true to her emotions, I guess. Which is a shame because, yeah, Marinette's character model is very pretty in the movie. They kind of got rid of her bug eyes and she doesn't bug her eyes out as much. But I don't know. I'll talk about it a bit more in character design though. So I'll leave it at that. The art and animation is fantastic. If there's one thing I would recommend you see the movie for, it's definitely the art and the animation. It's, it's so valuable for artists to see how they rendered this movie. It's just a really good case study for shading and lighting I think. I'm definitely, I, that alone makes me want to rewatch the movie. So yeah, that's that. I just, I can't talk highly enough about it. Especially as an artist, I really, really appreciate that a lot. Hey guys, this is Ayla Bell. I'm not sure if Callie mentioned this already, she probably has, but just in case, when we were doing our review after we watched the movie, our internet connection was really, really bad. So we ended up not being able to discuss with each other what we thought about the art animation designs and music so we ended up recording our parts separately so here's mine <laughs> here's my parts on how i feel about these things now i wanted this part to be unscripted because i just saw the movie and i don't really feel like writing out a whole script for it so Excuse me for all the cringe and wonkiness that you are about to witness. So, the art and animations, we kind of talked about this throughout the movie in itself, but there's not much to talk about. The movie looks really, really, really good. Like, on, part, on par with Disney, if not better in some parts. The colors were so super nice, the animation was so flowy, the movements were great, and how all the characters are rendered, it just looks so much better than the show. One of my gripes with the show is how it looks and how it's animated. And, well, more the style than anything, but it just, everyone looks so plastic and doll-like. And it's no secret on my channel that I prefer 2D animations, hand-drawn animations over the 3D stuff any, any day. I prefer it. I prefer the, the hand-drawn stuff. So, in a perfect world, we would have gotten the miraculous that was the anime. That would have been great, but no, we were left with, because of, you know, the whole spots on Ladybug's outfit and all that, we were left with this 3D, cheapish looking show. It's not like the show doesn't look good from time to time, but it's never been something I've been comfortable looking at. Looking at all the character designs just always made me feel kind of weird. Especially with the boys. With the boys... Adrian and Luca, I don't know, just the way that they look in this style, it's hard to just, it's hard to look at them for a long period of time. I don't care for it, but in this movie, everything looks so amazingly good. All the characters look great. Chloe's hair looks fantastic. Chloe in general looks fantastic, but I also really liked how in some parts of the movie, you can see, like, Marinette's hair is not polished. Well, not polished is not the right word. It's like unkept sometimes. You can see some of the hair strands coming out of her pigtails. It's not perfect and plastic-like as it appears in the show, and I kind of get that because it, it's hard to animate individual strands of hair. But in the movie, they have the budget to do things like that, so it just looks really good. And you can see things like characters' outfits getting all messed up and stuff during fights. Like at the end when Hawk Moth uh, forces Ladybug to detransform. Marinette's clothes are all like torn up and have dust and dirt and stuff on it. And it's really, really cool to see things like that. To see like the environment, you know, and the characters themselves be affected by things that are happening in the environment. It makes it feel so much more real. So a lot of love went into this movie for how long it took for this movie to come out, they really put a lot of effort into it. I really liked how this movie looked from the very first from, from the very first few screenshots we got on it. Everything just looks good. The lighting, 
uh, the movements, everything. I'm just going around in circles, but things really do look good. The effects look absolutely amazing. A little disappointed that we don't get too much of like the magical girl transformations, but I get it to some degree. I get it. Um, but yeah, animation, art, and I mentioned this at the beginning of our reaction, but Paris is actually populated and there's a lot of people, which is great. And on a similar vein of things, when the villains get really destructive, you feel the destruction. Uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot of destruction, a lot of collateral damage. And especially at the end with Hawk Moth doing his all-out assault, Paris is, like, destroyed. And as, as awful as it sounds, it looks really good. <laughs> it looks really good with the fire and all the lighting and stuff. So yeah, art and animation get like two thumbs up from me. Still would have preferred it as an anime, but this looks really, really, really good. If the show looked like this, I still wouldn't watch it because the love triangle and sorry, the love square, <laughs> love square, which becomes like a love pentagon at some point, uh, that discouraged me. Plus the story in itself discourages me. So yeah, that's my thoughts on the art and animation. I know I was saying that I was gonna go through my spots in random order, but at the moment it's just going off the order of which one is falling off first, so let's do this one. Characters. So the characters in the movie are quite different from the characters, their iterations in the series, their counterparts in the series, shall I say. For instance, you guys know that Marinette <laughs> in the series is essentially my number one mortal enemy. I just, I'm not gonna say I despise her, but I do dislike her a lot in the, in the series. I have a lot of complaints about her character, but in the movie, I am a Marinette stan, you guys. This is why I spray dyed my hair blue. <laughs> and stuck spots on my body is because I love Marinette in the movie. So, uh, let's let's go to characters now. Uh, starting with, of course, Marinette. I, I'll be honest, I really like Marinette here. She's so much better than the show. This is the Marinette that I would have wanted to see. And this is the Marinette I imagined when the show was first announced all those many years ago. I really like this Marinette. I do not mind this Marinette. She... Uh, I have no real qualms about her, to be honest. She she is nice. She is nice, and she has a good character progression that I can respect. So, and she doesn't. And interestingly, absolutely no really creepy tendencies at all. No no stalk. No low key stalkering. Stalkering. No low key stalking. No creepy stuff. She she has a normal behavior for someone who has a crush on somebody, and. Uh, her insecurities were were well uh, shown. Her reactions to things made sense. So, just speaking on Marinette alone, she was fine. <laughs> she was I a think good character. <laughs> they finally succeeded in making her seem endearing in the movie, and a lot of that I think has to do, which is tied a little bit to animation, but. The way they animated her was a lot more restrained and I think that actually worked a lot in Marinette's favor because her character has always been this shy, insecure, kind of lacking self-worth type of character. So it makes sense that her movements would be more restrained and less animated than what she is shown as in the show. So that's why I feel like it's more congruent and they really did a good job of having you sympathize with her character and her struggles in the movie. So I like this Marinette and I like that, I don't know, because they're 14. They're too young for romance anyway, at least not any meaningful romance. So I like that they had less emphasis for her on her crush on Adrian and just more of her struggles being a superhero. I really like that. Yeah, she was definitely a lot less spastic, like she's clumsy, but almost in a reasonable way. Whereas in the show, it seems like they really go out of their way to just make her really spastic and bouncy and stuff. And but here, yeah, it's a lot more muted and more understandable and realistic. And I kind of appreciate that more. So, yeah, Marinette gets a thumbs up from me. Who would have thought that getting Astruck to go away <laughs> would actually result in some positive results in the movie? Because it did. I love Marinette in the movie. I think they, her character study is so much better executed 
than the series. And yeah, I've gotten so many comments of people saying, Hey Callie, you know a lot of your complaints on Marinette gets addressed in season 5. But unfortunately, I don't care. Because I've already waited too long and I've lost interest. And I think a lot of people who just casually watch Miraculous Ladybug or were just, you know, tuning in for the first time to give it a chance will feel the same way. They will not have the dedication to see it through all the way to season 5, especially because there's just so many episodes per season of her being like that, you know? <laughs> I don't care if they addressed her behavior in the show because I don't care about that character anymore. However, Marinette in the movie from the start is already, I think, what Astruck was trying to do with her character in the first place. See, Marinette is still clumsy. She's still very shy, awkward, and uncertain of herself in the movie. But the way it is executed actually makes her likable and charming. She is shy. But they actually show her being shy. In the show, Marinette has never been shy around anyone but Adrian. Whereas in the movie, we actually see her just generally being a shy person and being afraid to interact with people. But wanting to make friends, which is really nice that they actually show her doing that. Another thing is that we kind of see more of Marinette's designer side. Or at least they do introduce it early on in the movie so that we are aware going into the rest of the movie that she is a designer and she has this dream of becoming a designer, which is very nice. In the series, Marinette is just insecure and afraid of people for no reason. And I find that kind of strange because everyone aside from Chloe is always pretty nice to her. But in the movie, they actually give Marinette a reason to feel kind of scared, insecure, and unsure of herself. And that's because everyone at school is actually shown to treat her kind of bad. Like they gossip about her, they whisper about her, and you know, it's this rumor mongering that, oh, she just attracts disaster wherever she goes, which she does, fair. <laughs> but still, it's not a nice reputation to have for a 14-year-old girl. So. Yeah, and her clumsiness in the movie is actually relevant to the story rather than just being a quirky recurring joke that people just shake, you know, put their hands on their hip and go, oh, Marinette. Like, it is actually the reason why she is treated the way she is and why she is so insecure of herself, which is, you know, it just makes more sense. And I like that. And we actually get a lot more character depth with Marinette. Like, they actually explore a lot of her self-doubt, her self-worth, her insecurity, and we see her grow. Like, you can see a very clear arc of where she starts and where she ends, and I appreciate that a lot. Uh, and it also just really helps that she's not a creepy stalker and, like, obsessed with Adrian. She is just, she has a crush on him to a reasonable degree, and she acts around him to a reasonable degree, which really really helps who would have thought that it would help you know and i like that they focus more on uh, it's kind of like what i said in my rewrite that they focus more on her being stressed about being a superhero and having to manage these responsibilities and being terrified of doing these things because of course you would be you're 14 <laughs> but yeah i love her she's still kind of petty to chloe though but I guess it's warranted for how Chloe was treating her. And you actually get to see Marinette growing as a result of being Ladybug, which is also like a very nice tie-in. Honestly, I couldn't... I don't really have any qualms about Marinette as a character. Aside from maybe this one part, but that falls into plot holes that I discussed earlier uh, in part one with her dad. So... Watch part one if you want to hear my thoughts on that. The other person here that I should talk about is... Adrian! <laughs> I have such a love-hate relationship with his character in the movie. Like, yeah, in the series, he's kind of just... Bread, milk toast, nothing exciting, nothing controversial, but also nothing. He has a bit more to him in the movie. 
but the more to him is <laughs> I just find personally annoying. It's not bad. I'm sure a lot of people probably would find it endearing. I just personally find him irksome. Is that a word? I find him irritating. <laughs> there are several points in the movie where I'm just shouting at him. <laughs> Everyone pause! He's singing! No! <laughs> ah, you're still cringe, <laughs> Cat Noir! Do you notice that Cat Noir's mask is sparkly? And you need a piano for that? Oh no, he's gonna sing at her! Like, are, are there's, no no, there's no way they haven't. Oh my god! Really? Shut up! <laughs> my god! Because it was dumb. It was just <laughs> romance drama. It was just romance drama. It's, it's exactly what it was. It's not even like serious <laughs> romance drama. It's literally a guy confessing to a girl. She says no and he gets butt hurt over it. Get over yourself, seriously. Can we talk about him in his room, just on his bed? That was so <laughs> pathetic. That took away so many points of charity I had for him. Anyway, I never, I'm not a fan of like Adrian Cat Noir anyway, but I am a huge fan of Ladybug and Marinette in this movie. Um, but yeah, Adrian in the movie is very still though very different to Adrian in the series because they really toned down the fame aspect a lot. Like we don't even know if he's a model in the movie. We don't know if he's even a celebrity. He's pretty much just kind of like the son of this famous fashion designer and he goes to this one school. And that's about all we know about him. Nobody really fawns over him or like treats him differently aside from Chloe. He just he's just a sad boy for most of the movie and then he becomes lovesick boy. I like that Adrian is not that famous in this movie. Like he is or at all really. Yeah. Like at all. Yeah. Except Chloe's the only one fan Chloe's the only one typing him up at all. Yeah. No one gives any darn about him. Which is great because he has he's less I feel like it's implied that he's less sheltered here. He has freedom to just like go off in the middle of the night by himself to an abandoned theater. And he can kind of decide what he wants to do more. Like in the show, he has like all this crazy schedules that he has to do. But it doesn't seem like he has that in the movie. Oh so yeah, he, he definitely doesn't feel like he has that. He's not like being suffocated by everything going on. He's just... He's still the sad cat boy, but he's sad because, you know, parent reasons, but not because his, his life is being controlled and all that stuff. Interesting what they decided to not do with him here, to not focus, to have him be a model and stuff. He's just a kid who misses his mom. That's that's it. Not, not everything else. I, I kind of appreciate that, though, because he's not that famous. He doesn't have bodyguards following him around he has more autonomy he doesn't have this crazy schedule that he's constantly being forced to follow he can just do whatever he wants and yeah okay i know you guys have been shouting at me that adrian is a senti monster but i don't know if that's the case in the movie though because he actually talks back and e expresses his frustration to gabriel in the movie. Oh yeah, that's something I forgot to mention earlier. He, in, in in this movie, he's able to actually... Okay, this is kind of season 5 stuff, but he's able to actually um, talk back to his dad and be like, Yeah, forget you, dad. Or, whereas in, in the show, he can't because he's a Senta monster and he can't really talk back. So it's cool that uh, that's not the case here. So, yeah. Something to that effect. And I like that about him, you know? I like that he has kind of that edge to him, that bite to him. And then he has this really cool rage moment at the end as well that kind of ties into my my suggestion for Adrian in my rewrite where I'm like, oh, I kind of wish Adrian was like Cat Noir, I guess. is more of a wild card that Ladybug doesn't really control. And that's another thing is that Ladybug and Cat Noir feel more like equals where she's not really bossing him around that much. And it, the, it's clear that the relationship is that they are helping each other. Even if Ladybug does receive most of the acknowledgement and credit. 
because it's still the ladybug show and cat noir is there oh uh, but that's another thing cat noir you guys have been saying like oh cat noir isn't who adrian truly is but in the movie yes he is because we see him as adrian acting the way cat noir would act i like that we just get to see adrian's true self is actually a cringy 14 year old boy who happens to be very wealthy we love that for him yeah i also like that we see his personality as cat noir is still a part of him uh, even when he's not cat noir you know like when he was kind of like hyping himself up in the mirror and you see that it's still him under the mask like cat noir is still who he is but then again adrian his personality apart from cat noir is still very ambiguous like they still don't give him much to work with past him like standing up to his dad you know no yeah aside from cat noir adrian himself is just a nice sad boy he doesn't really have other stuff going on with him which is unfortunate but again at least we get to see him as cat noir so it's still the same character and all that but yeah, neat, neat stuff, neat stuff. Could have done more, but neat stuff. It's It wasn't bad, for he's sure. He's just pretty, I guess. His personality is just that he's pretty. I, I still can't get over the whole bed scene with him. <laughs> I'm sorry. I had, <laughs> such, a, I had such a love-hate relationship <laughs> with him in this movie because at some parts, I'm like, yeah, go, Adrian. You're killing it. And then other parts, I'm like, shut your mouth can you n never speak again because every time he opens his mouth he irks me so i completely get where ladybug was coming from <laughs> oh and that music that played in the i know we're gonna talk about music later but th that 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 saxophone generic saxophone romance song <laughs> that just comes up and they did it twice they used the joke twice I, uh, it, it didn't it didn't work it worked less in that second scene with him on the bed it worked a lot less it didn't work the first time and it did not it didn't work it definitely the first time. didn't work the second time at least not for me it worked significantly less it didn't work significantly less the second time because he was sad sad and depressed because of his being rejected that was not the right song adrian does not get as much character development as marinette does which is sad because the movie is supposed to be about both of them. We mostly see, I mean, I guess we do get snippets of Adrian being sad because of his mom and his dad's neglect, but we don't really get to see how he feels about that, how he internalizes that. It's mostly just us being shown that he is sad, which fair, very fair that you would be sad, but I wish they went in depth like did more of a character study with him like they did to marinette but i guess that's too much to ask for <laughs> they could have expanded on that too like how because gabriel is so emotionally neglected by his dad he seeks emotional validation from ladybug and that should have been like explored like how marinette's lack of self-worth is explored without ladybug you know what i mean yeah so yeah there's a there's a little bit of missed opportunities uh adrian slash cat noir didn't get as much development on screen as, <laughs> as usual. weak as a marinette did as usual <laughs> <laughs> the next character i want to talk about is another important character gabriel okay now we get um, to the big guy gabriel thoughts um uh, I think we uh, talked about him a little oh, bit during the story as well. We did. Uh, Could have done more. Could have. He wasn't in the movie nearly as much as I would have liked him to. Uh, oh, what could I compare him to? Uh, have you ever seen the the My Little Pony movie that came out in theaters? I did a few years ago. Yes, okay. I watched it in theaters. <laughs> I did. I did too. Um, so it's like the Storm King. He's there, <laughs> but we don't get enough of him. We see, like, the lackeys yeah. a little bit more than we see him. Like, and then he pops off at the end of, like, we can tell he's supposed to be a fun villain. 
Like, we can tell Storm King and the Hawk Moth is supposed to be fun and kind of quirky. Which would have been great, like like Hades like, like I said. Which would have been great, but they disappear for, <laughs> for way too long. We get little snippets. But you know, they, don't, they don't feed it to us <laughs> as much as I would want it to. And with Gabriel's angst, again, he went from point A to C. We didn't see anything with the B of like what was going on with him during the montage. I I don't know if this is controversial. I just dis deeply dislike Gabriel. I do. I dislike him as a person <laughs> and as Hawk Moth in the series. I find him inconsistent, irrational, illogical, and overall just <sighs> so stupid for being outwitted by children like a hundred plus times but in the movie he's actually pretty cool as gabriel we don't really get to see him as hawk moth which is actually a relief and i will talk about that in character design but i love gabriel here we see how kind of him being a villain affects his character but only in glimpses and i also talk about this with alubel but i wish we could have seen how so there's a uh towards the end of the not the end but like during some parts of the movie we see adrian kind of show up and he's like this disheveled person <laughs> He's, he looks like a hot mess, basically. Just very unlike himself. We don't see how he became that way. We don't see what happened to cause him to end up that way. Which is sad, because I would really like to know. And I feel like the movie could have benefited with some focus on Gabriel as well. How he is... I mean, I guess they do have some focus, but it's like just these disconnected scenes with each other and I wish they just had more in-between through lines. And that's a problem that the movie has, is that they have a lot of sprinklings of potential story beats that they never thread together, they never connect, and then never resolve. And I just despise Hawk Moth still. I disagree that we should have seen Hawk Moth more because one of the downfalls of the show is that they showed him too much and it completely took away any impact he had as a significant villain character. I think what we had of Hawk Moth as a character was enough. We see his one solo where we see how his personality as a villain, how flamboyant he is, how like kind of that fashion designer part of him carried over as Hawk Moth, and that's it. I would have liked to see Gabriel more because I feel like that would have tied everything together better because like you said, like, oh, what happened to him? How did he get so disheveled? Is the power affecting him in some way? Is it corrupting him? And, you know, how did, does that impact him? Because I just find Gabriel more interesting of a character than Hawk Moth, and Miraculous Ladybug has always been built more on Gabriel versus Hawk Moth, his alter ego. That's fair enough. I I, I definitely understand that. I guess I, I guess the only part of me just got really excited when I saw that song, and I'm like, oh, he's gonna be fun. Like, if had that song not happened, I don't think I would have cared <laughs> too much if I saw him more in the movie. But then he was like all bouncy and stuff. I'm like, oh, we got a lot, we got a lot of character here. Okay, this could be fun. Then they didn't give it to me. No, that, <laughs> that part it. freaked me out. I hated that. <laughs> I like the song. I didn't care for the song again. It's not gonna go on my playlist. But it was just fun for me seeing how bouncy it was because it was so different from my picture of. Hawk Moth. <laughs> no, that 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 freaked me. That was what freaked me out. The animation freaked me out. I that is also not what I pictured Hawk Moth being, and it was such a strong dissonance that I just immediately checked out and was like, I never want to see this again. And I'm glad that they never showed it again. <laughs> so, like he didn't have that personality at any other part of the movie. <laughs> it was just for that song. Exactly. <laughs> so, like, why does that song exist? I just did not care for it at all. But anyway, background characters are really cool. Alia is still the same person. Now, Alia, Alia is still sassy and cool. She still has that cool older sister vibe. But 
I don't know, something about her focus on being like, oh, a Shiro, it's a female superhero, can you believe it? It feels a bit reductionist, especially like in this day and age where female superheroes are very much a thing. It's not that strange. It just, it feels ironically like patronizing, <laughs> almost. That's eh, a lot of stuff nowadays, which is unfortunate. But fortunately, they didn't hang, uh, hold on to that too long. Because usually when they do, my my senses go off of I hate this kind of start to go off but fortunately she only, they only said it once and didn't be like oh well girl well girl power they didn't go too heavy on the girl power it was just Alia with that one with that one uh, sentence so fortunately they, they didn't do that yeah anyway but, yeah Alia, Alia was cool she um, was cool but I'll get to the designs later so I'm just focusing on strictly character writing Nino is a bit cooler and I like how he gets kind of nervous around Alia because he has a crush on her. Nino is cool. I think they write a cool guy much better in this movie than how they wrote him <laughs> in the show. Probably because they have better writers on staff for that. And yeah, I like Nino a lot more. I feel like he has more personality in the movie than he does in the show where he's like, Come on, brah! Yeah, dude, brah! You know? <laughs> Though I just noticed that in the movie, him and Adrian are already friends. So we d we don't we're not at the ep we're not we're in the show where the show can, uh, chronologically starts out with Adrian going to the school for the first time and meeting everyone. These two are already friends and established friends at that. So that was interesting. True. That's interesting. I mean, but I guess if you were. And, like, the implication is that Adrian is new to the school, right? Which is why he didn't know about Marinette's reputation. So then how is he already friends with Nino? Who's been at that school for well, much longer. Wait, was the implication that Adrian was new? Well, mm. yeah, because he didn't know about Marinette's clumsy, like, catastrophic reputation. Which Alia mentions, because... Alia is also implied to be new, because she's like, you know, you've got a reputation around here. Yeah, I was wondering about that too, because if Alia was already at the school, actually, we don't know how old, okay, we don't know, okay, um, because if Alia was already at the school before all this, you'd think she would have, like, approached Marinette before, since she's all like, I like to follow chaos and the action, like, she would have introduced herself a lot earlier in Marinette's life, you'd think, so maybe she's new as well. But it also seems like Nino already had a crush on her, which imply, which could imply that it's a new crush or that he's known her for a while. I think it, it, it's reasonable for someone to meet someone and immediately get a crush on them, especially if you're 14. Oh yeah, that's true. That's true. But yeah, Nino was cool. I like that he wasn't 100% the cool guy all the time. He kind of lost his composure the Around moment Alia. Alia that's, yeah, I thought that was really sweet. So yeah, they were fine. They were fine for side characters. Do I, do I think Alia could have done more with Marinette? No, the, no, the movie was already jam-packed. We didn't really need that too much. Uh, I think what she had was enough, honestly. Yeah. Uh, it would have been cool, though, if even just like for a scene that we got Marinette appreciating the fact that she finally has a friend because it seemed like she's never had a friend. Oh, true. And now she finally has one. That's true. <laughs> Alia's like, I'm gonna be your friend now. And Marinette's just like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Real. <laughs> like, oh, oh, okay, I, I guess. Uh, I thought you'd be more excited. All right. All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Chloe is kind of toned down as a bully because she only really messes with Marinette, which makes sense because I guess Marinette is the easiest target to pick on. And we don't really get much on Chloe. Like, we are never told in the movie that she is the mayor's daughter, that she's super wealthy, aside from that, the fact that she has this really priceless cashmere sweater. But, you know, that's enough. That's enough for the movie. If I didn't have never seen the show, I would not know that, you know, that was a missing component. That was it. What the movie gave was enough context, basically. Chloe was awesome as well. I like that in the end, she ends up as kind of an equal rival to Marinette, as opposed to just um, a bully that nobody really takes seriously. Like, 
people kind of see in the you you see in the beginning how people are scared of Chloe. Although I kind of wish that they showed why people are scared of Chloe. Like why is she like this? Like we get no background on Chloe at all. We just see her in the confines of the school. And so like it she's just like, just school bully. Yeah. For for someone who's never seen Ladybug and Cat Noir before, she's just she's just a school rich girl. School rich girl bully. Doesn't but need any it, more depth. Is it even clear <laughs> that she's rich though in the movie? Cuz I don't think so aside from her having like a cashmere sweater in the beginning it's never really mentioned that she would be of wealth at all oh yeah i guess i, I guess that's true i it, it might be implied because she's all like oh i'm wearing a really expensive thing so i think that was like the only implication that she might be rich is because but yeah you're right they weren't as explicit about it she was not like my daddy is the mayor and, like, we know that her dad's the mayor, especially when they say a mayor bu uh, bourgeois, but they didn't say that explicitly in the movie, so... Yeah, yeah I don't know. it's true. I don't uh, know if Chloe's full name was even mentioned. They just call her Chloe, but not Chloe bourgeois, you know? Yeah, that that is fair. Though, I guess not necessarily rich. Implied rich, because of the whole cashmere stuff, but uh, just s standard school stuck-up bully. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I actually like that the movie showed why she dislikes Marinette, and it's because of how clumsy she is. So yeah, it makes sense why Chloe would bully Marinette. It's just very interesting that they didn't show any bit of Chloe and Adrian's relationship whatsoever. Yeah, it could have definitely impacted his his character arc in some some way. But they didn't even talk. They really didn't even look at each other, which is so weird. That's true. <laughs> Like you, like even if we we're taking, like not taking the show into consideration. Usually in movies and stuff, where there's a mean girl who pines after the main guy, she at least like schmoozes up to him or something, and kind of a weirds him out or gets in awkward situations. But they were not even within centimeters of each other. Yeah, yeah, true. Uh, as a Chloe stan, I of course one would have wanted to see her more and more uh, development. But again. This movie may be for people who've never seen the show before, so technically they wouldn't know what was behind the scenes there. True. But uh, I just as someone who hasn't seen as much of the show, how 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 extreme of a bully is she in this movie compared to what you've seen? She is definitely way toned down in this movie because she mostly just messes with Marinette. In the show, she messes with everybody. Okay. Well, hopefully in the next movie she'll get more to do. I kind of wonder if in the next movie we're going to be giving out more Miraculous. I can imagine they might do something like that. In which case, maybe Queen Bee? <laughs> I mean, they're going to they're gonna need to sell toys, so of course they're going to do that. That is true! Oh, they do need toys. Yeah. Although, do toys get sold for Nef Netflix movies? I have <laughs> seen... I have seen Miraculous Ladybug dolls based off of the miraculous ladybug movie in stores already so okay never mind <laughs> never mind yeah i know the movie came out in theaters in other countries so i, I can I, I okay i can i can see it all right yeah we need to sell toys so yeah more more heroes next time <laughs> yeah for real and oh my gosh yes let's talk about plague and Tiki. So Tiki in the movie is so much better than the show and this is crazy because I don't know if it's crazy, but I, I guess it's nice because they actually did what I would have liked to see. And that is that Tiki and Plague are more mentor figures to their respective miraculous holders. Tiki is kind of more drill sergeanty, like she's uh, a bit stricter with Marinette. She's like, okay, you need to pull yourself together. We have to do this. This is important. Don't just like mope around. Get your pri priorities straight. I'm gonna teach you how to do this. And I really, really appreciate that movie Tiki is like this. <sighs> there is one takeaway that I disliked about her character, but it's very minor and it's a nitpick. And it falls into music later on. Plague, meanwhile, I appreciate him even begrudgingly kind of offering assistance and advice to Adrian. What I dislike about his character is that he's just relegated to a fart joke the entire movie. And I just don't find that endearing, personally. How do you feel about Plague and Tiki? 
I like them. I like that they were more of mentor figures to uh, Marinette and Adrian, as I mentioned before, that they kind of provided more guidance. And Tiki wasn't just kissing up to Marinette all the time. She was also being like, you need to pull yourself together. And also, this is how you do things. You need to do this. You know, kind of more strict with Marinette. And Plague is more nurturing and giving advice to Adrian in place of his absent father. So I like them. I'm, I wasn't sure about the fart jokes constantly happening with Plague, though. That was a bit annoying. I definitely like Tiki. Tiki was cool. I didn't like in the initial direction where they were going with Plague. <laughs> with, with all the... With all those... I've never been a fan of fart jokes. <laughs> yeah, they kept going with it towards the end, and I'm just like, okay. So I guess huh. this is Plague now, just farts. I was like, wait, so Tiki gets to be the, the wise, the wise mentor. Well, well, not that Plague didn't have any wisdom, but it was overshadowed by the humor that they were trying to use. Not great humor. Like, that's that that's that's where this is a kid's movie, is, yeah. is that part right there. <laughs> Yeah. Which is a <laughs> This movie also made me feel really bad for Sabrina. I never cared about Sabrina in the show, but I cared about I felt really bad for her in the movie, so that says something. Also just quickly like Sabrina, I've never cared about Sabrina. I did not give a shit about her in the show, but I felt genuinely really bad for her in the movie. <laughs> and it was it was cool that she actually not overtly but sort of stood up uh help Marinette out there. Yeah. The, uh... <laughs> at the beginning so it sure it showed more depth to her character yeah like she's not completely a lap dog you could, she's not like reveling in it like she's been shown to be seen in, in the in the show it's just yeah. like oh, this, this is my life this is the life i have accepted for myself exactly. <laughs> kind of thing natalie is also still the same person and that's that i think that's all i have to say about the characters oh of course marinette's parents are also more they feature more in the movie. Like, they're more more of a character than they are in the show. And they actually play a prominent role in why Marinette is kind of struggling with balancing her two lives as a superhero and a, te a tween a teenager. And I really like her relationship with her parents and how the, it's kind of shown a bit more. Although, again, there's that unresolved conflict that they just forgot about between Marinette and her dad that I talk about in part one. Let's do the next one. <laughs> this is this one, because it's falling off once again. The music, yeah! But first, I would like to thank the sponsor of this video, Tokyo Treat and Sakurako. Tokyo Treat and Sakurako are Japanese snack boxes that allows you to experience Japan from the comfort of your own homes. Tokyo Treat is a monthly pop Japanese snack subscription box that will allow you to get up to 20 of the latest, most exclusive, limited edition, and seasonal flavored Japanese snacks that are only available in Japan for a limited time. Sakurako is a monthly authentic Japanese snack subscription box. Sakurako supports local Japanese snack makers with each box containing 20 traditional, authentic, and artisan Japanese snacks including Japanese teas and a special Japanese tableware. It's summer in Japan, which means it's time for the Hanabi Festival or Fireworks Festival. Sakurako and Tokyo Treat would like to give you a taste of these vibrant Japanese festivals through their snack boxes. This month's Tokyo Treat theme is Fireworks Flavor Fest. Late summer in Japan is all about food, festivals, and fireworks. Dive into this month's box filled with flavorful festival-inspired treats like the Salt Lemon Kit Kats, Salt Lemon Pretz, and prepare for a surprising twist with the mystery-flavored Fanta, a taste that will keep you guessing. Sakurako's theme this month is Festivals of Okinawa. Sakurako invites you to join the Festivals of Okinawa, Japan's popular tropical paradise. Allow your imagination to experience the warmth of Okinawa's sunshine and its culinary treasures with these Okinawa special summer treats like Okinawan salt senbei, pineapple mochi manju, and red tomato arare. They all pair excellently with the floral Okinawa sampien tea. This month's special item is the Bingata Uchiwa, a popular bamboo fan. I've actually been needing a fan for myself to help dry my makeup, so this was the perfect gift to come in my Sakurako box. Each box also comes with a booklet that lets you learn more about the snacks that you received as well as any allergen information. The booklet also contains a lot of helpful information about Japanese culture. 
If you would like to get a box for yourself or your loved one, then check out the links in the description. And now, back to the video. So, I think... <laughs> this is surprisingly really good. The music was surprisingly really good. I had very low expectations. In fact, one of the reasons I was afraid of watching this movie was because it was a musical, which I was... I was aware of and then suppressed and then was made aware of again recently by my sister and I was like, ah, I don't want to do that. <laughs> but it was actually really good. The music, a lot of it felt very Disney once again. Like, if you saw this movie having absolutely no idea about Miraculous, you would definitely think Disney put this out. But also, it's kind of strange that they still kept Christina V as Marinette's voice actor and yet they chose a different voice actor to voice her singing. They chose, even though Christina V herself can sing, she played Veracica Mayday in Hell of a Boss and she has a musical number in Hell of a Boss. So I'm just wondering why they would replace her singer they chose a French singer called Lou Jean and I have to assume it's because there's a French version for each of these songs but they I'm not sure if they still kept the same uh, voice actor for Adrian when he's singing because when Adrian sings he still sounds like himself whereas Marinette sounds really different it's very good it's just really different um, but yeah, anyway, back to the music. I liked pretty much all of, all of the musical numbers. They were really nice and I can see a lot of people putting out covers for them, including me. I am people. So, I don't know. Look out for that in the near future, maybe. There is just... Uh, okay, this ties in a little bit to what I mentioned about Tiki earlier. I liked her less when she was rapping. <laughs> I thought that was kind of an unnecessary addition to her duet with Marinette and I like her a bit less because of it because I'm petty but it overall the duet was still very good there's just one musical number that I just it cre it freaked me out I did not enjoy it 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 made me pull a face the entire time and that was Hawk Moth's number Mostly because the way he moves and behaves as Hawk Moth is so jarringly, jarringly different from how, how he is as Gabriel. And don't get me wrong, I like the lyrics. I think they characterize who Hawk Moth in the movie is very well. And you see his dynamic and how he treats his miraculous, which is very cool. But also... I discussed this briefly in part one as part of a plot hole is that canonically these songs are happening in universe like they're just randomly breaking out into song because Marinette mentions it in her duet with Tiki that this is a song so she was aware that she was singing so it just it makes me wonder about Hawk Moth's musical number because he has a dungeon full of people so does does Hawk Moth Gabriel Agress just have a dungeon that he locks people up in? I that just it leaves me with so many questions. <laughs> but anyway, that that's pretty much it for the music. It was very good. And the score, oh yeah, we gotta talk about the score. The score was so nice. It harkens back to the original theme of Miraculous without being tacky. It was super cinematic and I think Zag pulled it off very well. So great job to you, Zag. The music in this movie was very nice. I went into this with hesitance. <laughs> I didn't know what to expect when it came to the music, and I was especially hesitant hearing Bryce sing, if he was going to sing. And I'm still not sure if he sang, because, okay, I might be crazy here and I didn't check the credits, but that wasn't Christina V singing as Marinette. It was definitely her talking as Marinette, but it didn't sound like her singing. 
the voice sounded too different. And I know Christina has range, but she usually sounds like herself when she's singing. And even if she had range to sound like someone else, you'd think her marinette voice would match her singing marinette voice. But I'm pretty certain that this is not Christina singing, which is weird because Christina can sing. So, so because... Because because of that, I'm not sure if it is Bryce singing or not. If it is, then, you know, I, I will clap. I will clap because he's a better singer than I thought he was going to be. I've been listening to this dude voice act, not as, not just as Cat Noir, but as other anime characters and stuff. And his voice didn't come off to me as someone who could sing. But then again, I don't know why I'm sitting here judging that I think uh, which voices can sing or not. So that was more on me. I don't know if this is him singing. Whoever is singing for Cat Noir, whether, whether it be Bryce or someone else, they did a good job. Whoever is voicing for Marinette singing voice also did a good job. <laughs> and Hawk Moth had a song too, but I didn't care for it. I was more paying attention to the visuals. The visuals during his song were great. I really liked how comedic and charismatic and bouncy and, and uh, very Hades-like he was during the song. So I just more liked that part for the animation and the characterization less than I liked the song. The song, again, is not going on any playlist of mine. Every other song that wasn't that one was very, very good. I've only heard these songs once, so I don't exactly remember what they all sound like, but they sounded nice. They sounded nice, and I probably will listen to them again. My favorite song, I think, is either... The Tiki and Marinette song, the first one, or it's the Cat Noir and Ladybug duet song. I, one of those is my favorite. I don't know which one, but all of the songs are good. They are all very good. Very, very, very good. <laughs> I approve. So it wasn't as cringy as I thought it was going to be. The Cat Noir part, a little bit. <laughs> I don't know. I've, like I said earlier, I've always been a little uncomfortable looking at Adrian. A little less so with Cat Noir, but I don't know. It was it was cute, I guess. The song the song itself was nice. The song itself, I'm sorry, I'm just more stuck on the visuals. Every song was good. Every song except Hawk Moth's song was good. <laughs> it also ended really abruptly, and so did Cat Noir's solo song. They ended very abruptly. I don't know if they're supposed to be longer or not. Would this movie have worked if it wasn't a musical? Um, uh, no, they were able to get across some of the feelings and stuff a lot better because it was a musical. So I'm going to say yes. If some things in the writing would have to change if, if they decided to not go with a musical route on this. So yeah, good songs. I recommend them. Except Hawk Moth song. That one didn't need to happen. Except the visuals part. You know, no, we can keep that because the visuals were cool. And that song set up some unreal, some uh, unrealistic expectations on my part. So that's that's more on me. And the Cat Noir Ladybug song was, again, probably one of my favorite songs. But the visuals also made me uncomfortable with those two getting all lovey-dovey and stuff. Similarly to how Kalimara felt about it. I don't know if it's not so much the romance part. I don't know. I don't know what weirded me out about it because I like romance. I like romance anime. I like I like that. <laughs> I like romantic comedies, romantic dramas in anime form and all that stuff. So something about it was weird to me. I can't fully explain why it was weird. It just was. But the song itself was good. Okay, I am done <laughs> talking about the songs. Okay, on to the next bot. Where else? Ah, let's, let's do this one. Designs! Yay! <laughs> so the designs of the characters are... Okay, they're so much better. <laughs> they're so much better than the show. I mentioned this briefly in the art, but they just look so much better proportioned, and they look like more care was put into designing them for the movie and animating them. So everyone just looks really nice. Although some translations to the movie are definitely better than others. So I'm gonna do my 
top three best and my top three worst designs in the movie. For my top three best and in number one is actually Gabriel. Okay, Gabriel does not look like the squished pin man he does in the show anymore. He looks like an actual, well, proportioned man who is tall and imposing and very handsome, might I add. I'm glad that they gave him more width to his face and gave him a stronger jaw because I think that really helped. And his eyes are still like the same shape but more proportioned to his face which makes him look so much more aesthetically pleasing than he does in the show. Which, you know, they kind of just, they went for it and then they gave up halfway is how it felt like. But he looks excellent in the movie and there, there, there was one part where he kind of like has been doing the villain stuff for a while, he's been failing for a while. We don't really know what happened or caused him to look like that. But he comes out disheveled like uh, scruff and like undone shirt and he looks <laughs> really hot. I can see people making a lot of like uh, thirst compilations of movie Gabriel. And the Zhang Li voice finally suits him, I guess is what I'll say. Second best is Marinette. I think she looks great. I mean, she's always looked good in the show, but she just looks a bit better in the movie. I think they, again, toned down her bug eyes a little bit. She looks more Asian, I would say. Like, she looks like she is more half Asian than she does in the show, which I really appreciate. Although, I kind of just... Her eyelashes look a bit weird to me sometimes. Uh, and it's really sad because you can tell they put a lot of effort into her eyelashes. Like, they drew in and animated each one individually but it just ended up making her look quite weird because it was just so detailed that it was jarring to the rest of the car uh, cartoonish nature of the art style but anyway she looks really nice and again the animation did her a lot of favors because she actually um acts like a reasonable human being. I still think she needs to get herself checked out for her clumsiness because she might have a brain tumor, but I appreciate how she looks at least. And her outfit actually looks really nice in the movie. Like I never had a complaint about it in the end. And her ladybug dress at the finale was so, it blew my mind. It was so nice. And you can tell, you can actually like, it's believable now that she is a talented fashion designer and I'm very pleased about that and of course third we have Adrian I just lack enthusiasm for his character but he looks very nice I think he doesn't have as big a head as he does in the series anymore um, and I mean that literally and not figuratively because someone like did an edit where they just removed his hair and he just has like such a huge cranium underneath all that hair and he doesn't have that issue in the movie which is nice and uh, this is so strange because Adrian actually ends up being more expressive than Marinette in the movie at least they were not afraid to make him look goofy for the sake of being expressive and I wish they also took that risk for Marinette okay now let's talk about the three worst designs Okay, top spot, Alia. I'm sorry. She still looks like a soccer mom and I, I hate the way her hair looks in the movie. It just looks so flat and stringy. It looks like she hasn't washed her hair in a while. And it's such a disappointment because they could have done so much more with her design. Or at least her hair, come on. They didn't have to do her like that. <sighs> It just makes me a bit sad. I just wish they gave her hair a bit more volume, you know? But otherwise, her face looks nice. It's She doesn't have that creepy mouth thing she does in the show anymore, which is still a step up. It's just, compared to the standard set by the other character designs in the show, she falls a bit flat, like her hair. <laughs> Natalie, she really could have used some 
eyelashes. They really neglected her eyelashes and eyebrows in the movie. It looks fine in the show just because everyone kind of looks like they're bald in the face. But in the movie, her eye eyebrows are so thin and she barely has any eyelashes. It just... They really could have done more with her face. And also, the buns. If a character were to have their hair in a hair bun in the movie, it always looks like a, the poop emoji. And I'm not sure what's up with that. I'll leave it there. <laughs> now, the, this is the worst offender <laughs> for character design, I think, and the worst translated design in the movie and that is hawk moth and yeah okay fine it's extremely biased but this is a strong reason why i dislike his character so much because i just can't look at him he is he still has this the gray alien head with the purple suit and <laughs> what's worse is that they gave him nose holes they gave him nostrils nostril holes in the mask so and they keep shooting up his nose his angles are always up his nose and you just see those holes in the mask where his nostrils are and i can't look at anything but his nostrils that's why i despise this character uh I wish I could censor them, you know? It just bugs me so much. Anyway, some fun facts. Did you know that Cat Noir's mask is sparkly now? Every time they do a zoom, like a close-up of Cat Noir's mask, I notice that it has sparkle to it, which I thought was a nice touch. The designs, everyone's design is pretty much shot for shot, not shot for shot, but the designs are pretty much the exact same as in the show, but polished. And this is a, a small thing, and it's maybe this goes in art and animation, but at some point in the movie, we actually see Marinette without her jacket, and you could just see the the short sleeve, not short sleeve. What kind of what kind of shirt is that considered? Anyway, we 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 see the shirt under the the jacket, which I don't know if they've done that in the show before, but it was, it was a nice detail because again, again, it makes the characters feel more real, not like they're dolls, like articles of their clothing can come off or get uh, ruined and it's neat to see that <laughs> hopefully it doesn't sound weird but yeah everyone has the same designs there's just some things here and there that are slightly different like on cat noir's mask there's like some glitter on it which is neat neat choice and ladybug's yo-yo has these intricate designs on it which is really really pretty like that is something i would actually like to have that yo-yo with those uh gold designs on it it's really really nice speaking of designs i know this is still miraculous ladybug so ladybug still has to look like lady still has to look like ladybug which means that we are still stuck with this boring outfit which i have extensively talked about how much i don't like I am less offended by it in this movie. I'm also kind of used to it, but I still, I would always prefer a more intricate design. Like they, the the, the movie even kind of acknowledges at some point that she that that she looks silly, kind of by like Cat Noir and someone else calling her a watermelon, which is cool that they're kind of pointing that out. But you know. <laughs> But still, the textures on it are nice and stuff. And again, I'm, it, for some reason, it doesn't offend as much as it does in the show. I still don't prefer it. <laughs> I still don't prefer it. I still prefer something more. But it is what it is. So Ladybug's outfit is the exact same as it is in the show. But her yo-yo is different. So would it have been too much to ask for her outfit to have little gold accents on it as well? Since the yo-yo also has some gold accents, it would have had her match... Her accessory a little bit more and it would have made her outfit more exciting and distinguish this from the show that's just what I think like if they're gonna go out of their way to add little glitter on cat, cat, cat noir can we not have like little swirls of gold on ladybug it would have been cool I think so yeah so yeah everyone looks exactly the same but you know in HD we have two new characters two and a half I guess 
There's the first akumatized victim who just turns into a gargoyle. So that it's neat, I guess. It's cool. It's a gargoyle. And the second one is a mime, and the third one's a magician lady. They look cool. They're fine. One's a mime. It's just a mime. So it's a mime. The magician lady. She has a cool design. I wouldn't mind drawing her. She looks. She looks neat. I'm sorry. I'm not a designer. I'm not good at really judging fashion all that much. I'm, I'm not offended by anyone's design. Any any and all comments I would make on someone's design I have made in the past, so. We are finally down to the final spot. Plot holes. I discussed this a bit more in part one with Alubel, but here's some cursory skimming over of plot holes. So first thing, I mentioned this before in music is that they canonically break out in song, which I'm not sure how to feel about because that's a bit world-breaking for me. It kind of sh it shook my suspension of disbelief a little bit, but you know, it doesn't matter. Other plot hole is during the first half of the movie when Cat Noir and Ladybug fight their first Akuma, they just let the Akuma go and we never find out what happens to it. We don't know where it went. They just let it go and forgot about it. So that's fun. Third is that after Alia kind of takes her first pictures of Ladybug, she shows the pictures that she took to Marinette and most of those pictures she took, she was not even there for. So how did she get those pictures? Hmm, doesn't make sense, does it? <laughs> third one is that Hawk Moth, third, fourth, fourth one is that Hawk Moth just goes creative mode in the last part of the movie when he akumatizes himself. It's not really clear what his parameters are and if that, and if there were any drawbacks to akumatizing himself in the first place. And he got all these spectacular villain powers. He could literally use the force and turn water into lava and just completely decimate Paris. So my question is, why didn't he just do that from the start? Seems like it would have saved him a lot of time, effort, and stress. Third, uh, I don't know, I'm not good at counting. Fifth is how did Marinette save Cat Noir in the finale when he was being held up by the force by Hawk Moth when she no longer had her miraculous and Cat Noir was pretty high up in the air and she can no longer jump that high. So how did she get up there? I don't know. You'll have to find out in our discussion in part one. And finally, where did Gabe go in the end? So by the end of the movie, Gabe has his identity revealed and it be it's public basically. A newscaster announces to all of Paris that the person who destroyed Paris was Gabriel Agreste, famous fashion designer. And then we never see what happens to him. Was he taken to prison? Did he escape into the alleyways? We don't know. We just end with... Marinette and Adrian going to a school dance and I guess kissing supposedly but we don't know what happened to Gabriel we don't know if he ever saw any consequences and hopefully we don't see him revert if they were to make another movie which Alubel has told me that they are making two more so I don't know what that's going to be about. They've already resolved the main conflict that has been going on for five seasons in the Miraculous Ladybug series. So I'm a bit worried about that. But anyway, those are all my points of review. Thank you for watching. Haha, -ha, I have in fact deceived you. Because there is a secret. There is a secret spot that was supposed to be over here. There was a secret spot waiting to be discussed. And that is the impact that it left on me. <laughs> so as I mentioned before in the beginning of the video, I was... Oh, kicked my camera. 
I was very scared of watching this movie for a number of reasons. First of all, I don't like cringing. Second of all, I don't want to go into a rage. And third of all, I was scared I was gonna like the movie and then not have any other media to consume of it. See, the movie and the series are pretty much canonically two different canons. They operate on their own set of rules and universes and the characters, although share the same names and faces, are very different from the series. And I don't know how much of the series they are going to incorporate into the movie moving forward, right? So it's just a, it's a, a very different canon and it does feel like a soft reboot of the series of sorts. So I know that after watching this movie, I would not be able to go back to the series because no. And so the impact that it left me in the end is that you know how in Avatar the Last Airbender most people will say Oh, <laughs> what are you, there is no live-action movie by M. Night Shyamalan. What are you, what are you talking about? There is there is no movie in Ba Sing Se. Now, for the MLB movie and series, it is the complete opposite. Because for me, there is no series in Ba Sing Se. Anyway, thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. If you liked the video, make sure to like and subscribe. And tell me what you think of the Miraculous Ladybug movie if you've seen it in the comments below. Thank you so much for all the amazing fan art you guys drew of Wild Word. It really makes me happy to see that you guys are enjoying my original works as much as my fandom stuff. Um, it really means a lot to me. Thank you so much for hanging out with me in the pond for a while. I hope your skin didn't get too pruney. Big shout out to my lovely pond dwellers on Patreon, and if you want to become a pond dweller and get early access to my content, join my Patreon. If you want to see more from me, then please follow me on all my social media. If you want to submit fan art or chat with me, join my Discord server. And if you want more of my stories, check out my Wild Word series here on YouTube because that will make me really happy. All the links are in my description, and I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye!